It's now mid-March in central Maine. There's still plenty of snow on the ground, but for all of us beekeepers, we are uh, getting very, very anxious and we're getting very excited because the snow is melting. The weather is warming up. You can see the snow melting away from the buildings. Uh, it's getting close to bee season time. to the time of year that we are probably the most excited and the most anxious to get going. So uh, let me flip this around. So for those of you who do not know, my name is David Giles. I live in central Maine, Corinth to be precise. I'm a local, uh, what I call a micro beekeeper. Uh, I maintain a few hives here and uh, focus on uh, pollination and honey, of course. And uh, I do it more as a hobby, but I've uh, been slowly moving it into a side business so I can have a secondary income stream coming in. Uh, just one of the one of the few income streams I'm trying to build up. Uh, for those of you who know me, uh, know that I love finance, business, and that sort of thing. So uh, it's one of those things I'm trying to uh, implement. It's a very tough uh, industry to make to make money at, uh, especially if you're doing it as part time, like I am. I have a full time job, and uh, uh, that is my primary source of income. That's where I get most of my benefits. And this here is just something I'm trying to build up. Uh, as I get closer to retirement from the military and uh, trying to find ways that uh, can occupy my time while bringing in a couple of bucks uh, as I reach uh, midlife and, and get closer to, to uh, retirement age. So anyway, so like I said, this is the time of year we are excited. We love seeing the, the temps warm up. We love uh, going through all our beehive equipment. I'm up in my loft right now. Uh, going through a bunch of things and getting things ready. If you look behind me, you'll see what I've got set aside right now that's going to be going out this year. Um, one of the things I do before I even start the year, and just give you a little bit of background before I get into that, uh, I have about five years uh, under my belt as, uh, from beekeeping. Uh, some of those years have been very good, some of them not so good. Uh, like most people, when you first start off, you generally have a lot of failures and a lot of learning curves. And um, after two, three years, you start uh, listening to people that have been doing it for a while, those of them that uh, will give advice, which a lot of them do. And uh, you start implementing and changing your strategies and uh, looking at it from the perspective of the bee instead of the honey that comes out the hive, then you start having more and more of a success. So... Um, on my fifth year, that was my, by far my best year I've ever had as far as a honey per, uh, crop. Uh, I only had a couple of hives that year, uh, but each of those hives produced oh, in excess of 100 pounds per hive. I couldn't believe it. I, I don't know where the bees were getting the, the, the nectar, but it was, it was by far the best year I've ever had uh, when it comes to honey. Uh, unfortunately, that following year, I got deployed with the military and could not do bees that year, so I had to take a year off. So this year, I am back. Uh, there's no chance of me being deployed, so uh, probably never again. But uh, So I am getting back into it, and uh, I'm going to actually expand a little bit. I'm going to go from two, three hives up to about ten this year. I'm also going to be changing my strategy around a little bit more and uh, follow in line with some of the beekeepers I've been studying and researching out of Canada um, and how they do their management. So... Up to this point, I have been doing dual or two brood box uh, setups where you have two, two large supers and the rest of them are honey supers on top. Uh, I am going to be moving to a single brood box, just one on the very bottom, and then having honey above it. Um, there's a couple of reasons for that. And number one is it's to uh, basically trying to maximize the, the honey production piece of it. Uh, while at the same time being able to manage the bees themselves. Sometimes when you have to dig through a couple of boxes, you, do, you, you end up disrupting those colonies an awful lot, and I don't want to do that. I want to get in there, do what I need to do, and get out. And uh, the second reason why I'm going to be going to a single brood box setup is uh, I'm going to be moving them inside during the winter months, and I'm going to keep, be keeping them in a, in a dark uh, shed, uh, I'm going to be building that this summer, hopefully. Uh, that's going to be somewhat climate controlled. I'm going to have some intake 
and outtake fans to uh, to push the cold air in if if the, if it heats up inside too much, and I'm going to be keeping it pitch black. So, um, and I've been following a couple of beekeepers out of Canada that do that. Uh, one of them has over 1,500 hives, and every winter he puts them inside, shuts off the lights, and leaves them there for over five months before opens, opening up the shed and bringing them out. So that's what I'm going to be doing. So I'm up in my, my uh, loft right now where I have all my equipment, and uh, just to kind of going over my inventory and find out everything I need, need to order uh, that I haven't ordered already and getting it ready because uh, I'm hoping by uh, end of April, beginning of May, to have my hives out and uh, to catch that early uh, dandelion and, and fruit trees and maple and all that stuff. So um, one of the things I do, and I, I post this on my blog as well, if you go to gileshoney.com, there's a blog post there that... Uh, I've been slowly adding and, and moving things into. So um, one of the things that I do, and I'll be posting on that, is is before every, any year starts, I start with the end, end game in mind. What, what do I want at the end of that year? So, um, and then I just reverse engineer it all the way back to the spring. So this particular year, I am hoping um, to get about 300 pounds of honey. 300 pounds of honey in, 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 uh, in, a, in a first year of production is going to be tough, and I'll, I'll be the first to admit that. A lot of times you don't get any honey out of a first year hive. And uh, so I'll be starting this year, every one of my hives will be first year hives. So uh, in order for me to do that, I've got to uh, um, be very diligent in my approach. So 300 uh, pounds of honey, if one hive equals four, about 40 pounds of honey, which I have gotten that from single hives before, or first year hives rather, um, then 40 pounds goes into 300, 7.8-ish times, so basically eight hives. I then give myself a 10 to 15, 10 to 20% buffer. So I'm going to assume that I'm going to need about 10 hives to get my goal. So those 10 hives equals, uh, then, I, then I start building my inventory. So 10 hives, I'm going to need 10 frames in each of those with 10 sets of wax foundation. I'm going to use wax foundation versus plastic in my brood boxes. So, um, so I'm going to need 100 frames, 100 sets of foundation. And then in my honey itself, I'm going to work um, two, two honey supers off each hive. So I'm going to need 20, tw a total of 20 honey supers. And I generally run mediums. I've got a few small kicking around still. Um, but uh, mediums is what I'm going towards. So 20, 20 uh, honey supers, that's going to mean I'm going to need 200 frames and foundation for those. Um, and then integrate, integ integrated pest management, I need to make sure I've got the boards and the screens for those. And then my treatment that I'm going to be doing, yes, I do treat my hives. I went a, one year where, without treating them. Um, I, I had mixed results, to be honest. So I'm going to go and treat the hives, be, be checking very diligently for mites. That's going to be the big thing that, that uh, I think I'm going to be battling uh, over, you know, out, outside of the wintering, you know, keeping them alive through the winter. So if I can keep the, the mites off them, I think they'll, they'll go into winter very healthy and uh, come out in the spring very strong. So um, as far as my treatment goes, I'm going to be doing a mixture of oxalic acid through a vapor delivery system, and I'm going to be doing powdered sugar treatments every couple of weeks, um, just to, to basically knock those mites off, get them down on that uh, integrated pest management board where I'll have some sticky residue on it. Um, I'll also be able to use that to, to, to do a mite count. So we'll be showing all that stuff as I do it throughout the year. So, so anyways, um... Getting back to what the whole purpose of this video, this is kind of just an introduction, uh, a test uh, of what I'm going to be doing, how I'm going to be doing it, and uh, uh, trying to get out in front as far as possible. Because uh, once the season gets going, uh, just like any type of farming, you know, one thing that goes wrong, and next thing you know, you're way behind. So um, if you want to follow us, that'd be awesome. I'd appreciate it. If you have any experience as a single brood box management uh, beekeeper, uh, I'd love to hear from you. Uh, post a comment, send me a message, uh, let me know the, uh, the ins and outs of it, uh, what, you, what worked well, what didn't, 
and uh, I'll be doing the same as far as the follow-up videos. Like I said, in the meantime, I'm just doing a lot of inventorying, setting a, a lot of stuff aside. So let me just kind of skip around here. I'm gonna flip the bet, the uh, the camera around. So like I said, I'm gonna need 10, 10 beehives. So right now I've got nine ready to go and that'll be my 10th one once I coin clean it up and repaint it. Actually, I'm gonna repaint just about all these, just throw a fresh coat of paint on them um, and then uh, go through all my other components the bottom boards, make sure I've got the, enough screen boards for the integrated pest management, make sure I've got plenty of inner cover, which are all these, make sure I've got plenty of feeders, which I'm gonna change out. I've got, I've got these type of feeders, and these are just the screens that go in them um, that go on top of the hives themselves. I'm gonna move away from those, I think, and go to a, more of a pale feeder. Um, but uh, So I'll be, I'll be have to add those to my inventory. But then your, your inner covers, your outer covers, make sure you get all that stuff before you even start. And then uh, I've also got my five frame nukes for when the time comes, if I wanna split them, or if I have a weak hive that I've gotta bring back down to kind of confine the space, I've got all those ready as well. So uh, I'm very, very anxious to get going this year. And uh, just, I've got a few extra things kicking around here that I'm gonna clean up, go through, few more down here that I'm going to clean up and uh, just have ready. Now, I've got a War A hive that I built a few years ago. I'm not sure if I'm going to put that out this year or not. Uh, one of the other things I am looking seriously at is getting a Slovenian AZ hive set up. And that's basically where you build a shed and one whole wall is nothing but beehives. And it's a different type of beehives. They're not the Langstroths that, that most Americans are used to seeing. These are like a cupboard. And you open them, open them up from the back, and you pull them out. You know, anyone that's been in the IT field uh, dealing with data circuits, circuit boards, same, same, just like that. You pull the, you pull the frames out from the back. You do what you can do. Put the frames back in. Close them up, uh, and you work from inside the shed, which is kind of cool. So I found a lady in New Hampshire that deals with it. Uh, I think there's one or two people in Maine that do it. So I may be trying to reach out to them as well. Uh, and I may be implementing that into my strategy. But uh, uh, this year I'm going to be focusing on using what I have because, I mean, I've, I've already got the investment in all these Langstroth, so I'm not just going to throw them away or set them aside, but I do want to implement uh, or look at implementing those AZ hives. I'm very anxious to do that, actually. Uh, if nothing else, I'm going to have a very, very cool tool shed uh, where I'll have all my equipment and, and, and gardening stuff and all that. So anyways, um, I, I don't want to ramble on too much. Like I said, this was just kind of an introduction. And, uh, if you're interested in beekeeping, you want to follow me. Um, if you want to find out how to do stuff in a colder climate, uh, feel free to follow me, like, share, and all that, all that stuff. Follow me on my blog, gileshoney.com. That's a G-I-L-E-S. And uh, I'm on Instagram, face, Facebook. I'm trying to change the name around. Facebook's being kind of a pain on, on uh, them allowing me to change the name. So I, I may have to start a whole new page for that. Or I just may ignore Facebook altogether. Uh, with all the problems they've been having lately, I, I may look at other options. But uh, anyways, um, feel free to follow back. We should be coming back uh, at least once a week. Uh, until then, we'll see you.